Hi, this is Sahala. To work with Entity Framework Core, we have to follow few steps. First, we have to install NuGet packages for Entity Framework Core. We have covered this in our previous session. Next, we have to set up model classes because we are going to follow code first approach. So we have to have the model classes. Later, we are going to create the database out of it. And we have our model classes ready. Third step is to configure DB context class. Today we are going to discuss how to configure DB context class and few other important information. This is our MVC project. Just a quick recap. Inside dependencies, you can find the packages. Inside packages, you can find SQL Server and tools. These are the two NuGet packages that we have installed in our previous session. Our model is ready. Tutorial is our model. See, this is our model which has got three properties, ID, name and description. Based on your project requirement, you can have as many models as you want. Intention of this project is to teach you ASP.NET Core concepts in a simple way. So I'm keeping it simple. So we are having only single model that is tutorial. The question is, what is DB context? DB context is a class that represents session with database and the same is used to work with database. Next, how to configure DB context? The first step is we create a class that derives from DB context. See, we have installed all the necessary NuGet packages for Entity Framework Code. So this DB context class is ready to use, but we don't use this class directly. What we do is we create a separate class that derives from DB context so that we can avail all the functionalities available inside DB context. Then what we do? To that derived class, we add the properties of type DB set for each model. What this means is, see, in our example, we have tutorial model. Inside the class that derives DB context, we create a property to represent our tutorial model. Then we pass the configuration information. Configuration information in the sense, our context object should know which is our database server and what is the name of the database and all the and all the other necessary information. So we pass all the configuration information. To start with, I'll create separate folder by name context. It is not necessary to create separate folder for this DB context. Just to make the things clear, I'm, I'm creating separate folder. If you want, you can create inside models folder as well. I will add new folder. It's going to be context. Then let's add a class. Let's name it as tutorial db context. Click on add. Now we have to derive from db context class. We are getting error because we did not include the namespace. This class is inside Microsoft.entity framework code namespace. Let's add it. We are done with the first step. We have created a class and derived from db context. Now we have to create the properties for each of our model. Our model is tutorial. Let's add the property of type db set. We have to include the namespace. Done. We have created a class and added the property. Now we have to pass configuration information. To pass the configuration information, we shall create the constructor and pass DB context options as parameter. Our DB context options will have all the necessary configuration information. So as we have created the constructor and pass the DB context options, whenever we create the instance of tutorial DB context, it will be ready with all the necessary information. We are done with all the steps to configure DB context. We have created a class. We have created the properties to represent our model. Then we have passed the necessary configuration information. Is it ready to use now? No, we haven't specified the database information anywhere. We are going to do that in a connection string. We will have a separate session and we will see that in our next section. Thanks for your time. See you soon in the next video. Thank you.